In part one of this ESP826 series, I looked at how to connect and set up the module. In part two, I looked at how to connect it to the Arduino environment and upload Arduino sketches. In this part, part three, I'm going to take a look at how to download and use the tools to update the firmware on the ESP8266. You may find that if you've used Arduino with it, you can no longer use the AT commands as normal, or you may just want to update the firmware to the latest version. If you do, please make sure that you know what you're doing and that you really need to do it, because as with any firmware update, it is possible to make your module unusable. So now let's take a look at how to download and use the software tools and the files supplied by Espressif on their website, updating the ESP8266 firmware. To flash the firmware, you will need to download the ESP8266 flash download tool and the SDK package containing the firmware files. These can be found on the Espressif resources website, and I'll put a link to this in the description below this video. There are various firmware options. If you're planning to use anything other than the non-operating system firmware, then you probably already know what you're looking for, and you won't need any help from me. If you just want to update the module though, or put it back to its original state, then download the latest version of the non-OS ESP8266 SDK. It's also a good idea to download the ESP8266 SDK Getting Started Guide from the documentation section of the resources website page. Unzip the packages and have a folder ready for the files. Look through the folders that have unpacked and you'll find bin files, documents and various other subfolders. In the bin slash AT folder, there will be a readme file with details of the firmware files you need for your module. Here, I'm focusing on the ESP12F module, and I found the correct bin files by looking at these documents and comparing them with the charts and info in the Getting Started guide. It's important not only to have the correct files to flash, but also to set the correct memory address for them in the Flash Download tool. To use the Flash Download tool, double-click on it, and you'll see that the tool opens a terminal window and then offers some button-based options. Choose the one for ESP8266 and then the tab for SPI Download. The Download tool has a section for the paths of the files you need, and next to each path is a space for the memory address. Four files are needed to flash the firmware, and these are either in the BIN folder or the AT folder inside it. As the software is updated, the version numbers may change. The main point is that you need one of each type, data default BIN, boot BIN, blank bin and an AT user bin, which needs to have the correct flash memory type. For example, I need 1024 plus 1024 for the 2048 ESP12F. These are the ones I used for the ESP12F with the address in brackets. I'll put this information in the description section as well. You can put the files into the slots by clicking on the three dots and then selecting them from your folder, and then the full path to the files will be shown. Put the address in the box to the right of the three dots, and if the flash tool is feeling happy about everything, the box will turn green when you tick the checkbox to the left of the file name. There are some settings to be checked as well. I'm showing the settings for ESP12F. These include QIO for Quad Input Output, and this refers to the memory setup, and is related to the flash size setting of 16 megabit C1. Set the crystal frequency to 26 megahertz, and the SPI speed to 80 MHz for the ESP12F. It's important to keep in mind, though, that other module versions may require different settings. If you're not sure how to connect the module, then take a look at part one of this ESP8266 video series. A full guide is also available on our website. The basic connections, pull-up resistors and so on, must be in place before proceeding, and you'll need a serial to USB adapter to connect to a computer. Just connect RX to TX and TX to RX between the module and the USB adapter, as well as making sure that they have a common ground. Before connecting to the flash download tool, disconnect pin 0 from anything else and connect it to ground. Then press the reset button, and the module will now have rebooted into programming mode. Set the board rate to 115200 and check that you have chosen your module's COM port correctly. To make sure you're properly connected, Uncheck the file boxes and press Start. The software tool will now show the details of your module in the Detected Info box. 
This helps to establish that everything is working before you start uploading. If you've established that you are connected and are happy to proceed, then go back to your four firmware files and enable them by checking the boxes and seeing everything turn green. Take a deep breath and then press Start on the Flash Download tool. The terminal window will show some activity and a green progress bar will start at the bottom of the Flash Tool window. When the process is over, the Download Panel Indicator will change to Finish. And at this point, disconnect pin 0 from ground and reconnect it to its pull-up resistor. Press the Reset button again and the module will now be back in operational mode with its new firmware. Press Stop on the Flash Download tool, or just close it, and open a terminal window. You can also use the Arduino Serial Monitor. You'll need to be able to send carriage return and line feed at the end of each command. For some terminal programs this requires pressing key combinations like Ctrl M or Ctrl J. You don't need to do this in the Arduino Serial Monitor. Check also that the board rate is set to 115200. Press Reset and maybe after some random looking characters, you should see ready in the terminal window. Type AT followed by carriage return and line feed and the response should be OK. Now type AT plus GMR and send the command and you should see something like this, which is information about the currently loaded firmware. You can check the Wi-Fi aspect of the module by typing AT plus CW mode equals 1 and this sets the module to station mode. Then send AT plus CWLAP, after which you should see your local networks listed in the terminal window. The module's now ready for use in your latest project or new product. In some circumstances, it's necessary to use different board rates to communicate with these modules. For basic sending and receiving of commands, the ESP8266 uses a board rate of 115200. For information from the firmware boot manager, use 74880. Remember to change these settings back when you finish checking or setting commands. In Arduino sketches, if you're sending information to the serial monitor using the command serial.begin, then that almost certainly needs to be set at 9600. Sketches are often offered for copy and download with different board rates, usually 115200 in this context, and that can bring your project to a halt, so it's worth checking and changing before you upload to your board. So, with free downloadable tools, it's possible to use the ESP8266 module with Arduino and then to return it to its original state and use it with AT commands and as a Wi-Fi add-on. I hope you found this video useful and if you have, please give us a like and please subscribe to our channel. It's worth taking a look at our website q26.co.uk as well. I'll be making more videos soon and meanwhile, thanks for watching.